Hello Ratbags, it's Jade, welcome to the No One Is Playing series. Today we're going to be taking a look at Rend, with the announcement out of the blue that it's left Early Access after being in the Early Access program for a year. What is Rend? Rend promised to be a survival massive multiplayer game where you would actually take part in faction battles against other players. All the usual tropes you come to expect from the modern game, crafting, survival elements, but they also had lots of other newer, fresher ideas too, to go alongside some of the more established things like taming creatures. Magic, might, weapons, you name it, it was all available in Ren's Warplay. Going against the factions was the big draw, and that was the real, real difference for me, what separated this from a lot of other games. It appears though not a lot of people really got down with it. There was plenty of coverage from YouTubers and streamers and it was top 5 on Twitch in the week that it launched in Early Access last year. But that didn't maintain. Streamers and YouTubers stopped playing it as much and over the course of that year we didn't maybe get enough content that the players wanted. They have updated it, they have put in a whole hell of a lot more patches into the game fixing a whole host of the things that the community wanted but still the player numbers just never really caught up. So what went wrong with Rend? Why did no one take on this fresh idea on the survival genre? Let's discuss in No One Is Playing. So literally in an announcement today, Rend has announced it's come out of early access. With patch number 9, a significant patch improving and adding a bunch of features long requested by the community. But it looks like it is a goodbye patch rather than the start of something. Normally early access gives you the chance to gain that feedback, to work on your game, improve it significantly without the pressure of it being in full release. And then once it does hit full release, you're hoping that it's going to generate enough buzz and people can really see the effort you've put into it and see a good game. It doesn't always mean the end of that game's updates. Not normally anyway. In today's modern age, when games leave early access, we all know they generally get lots of updates, content fixes, as well as some games, particularly online ones, that offer brand new content well long after it's come out of early access. That is not the case with Frost Keeps Rend. They have announced they won't be supporting the game any further with updates or content. The servers, of course, will be running. They are a small studio, but they have no plans to add any more features to the game, which is really surprising and a bit of a shame. It does look like they're cutting their losses. Rend simply didn't perform well enough to warrant giving it more life and giving it more content. As an independent studio with 18 developers, we were thrilled that during its first week of early access, Rend held a top 5 on Twitch. More than 800 channels streamed their Faction Wars to the world through our Rend Partner Program. This marks a significant feat for our small team and serves as a symbol of the survival community's interest in the game that changes the status quo of the genre. We've received and heeded amazing crucial feedback from the community during Ren's time in early access, making substantial and frequent updates to the game to improve the overall gameplay experience, and ideally, we would continue producing content updates for Ren into the future. Ultimately, being an independent developer with finite sources, we must weigh the resource cost of continued development against its commercial potential. Although we will continue to support the final version of Rend down the road, we don't currently have any plans for adding new or future content to the game. However, if a steady influx of players are buying and playing Rend, we re-evaluate opportunities for adding new content or future updates. As the usual case with No One Is Playing series, we are going to be taking a look at how many people have been playing the game since its inception. In the week or two of its launch, it did hit a fairly substantial amount of players, and that's pretty respectable for a first game, a real independent game, particularly on Steam, with so much competition around at that time as well. 5,000 players is not to be sneezed at. But much like the same pattern I often talk about, so many of these early access games drop immediately the month after. It's pretty incredible, but they literally lost 90% of its player base in just the space of a month. And it really is true, they had every streamer and trooper I could think of giving this game a go, so why didn't it succeed? And it just got really bad after that, literally only two months on, dropping down to barely the 200 marks. And it never really recovered. Subsequent updates, content improvements, and brand new features added really made it just a dead loss, resulting in this month dropping to below 100 people playing this game. Before anyone cries off, that doesn't include private servers, it does. Steam includes all private servers. It's not about the private servers, it's about the players logging into the Steam registry files, 
play in these games. So whenever I take a look at this, just an FYI, it does include unofficial servers too. And even that wasn't enough to keep this game going. It's pretty crazy this game has died so badly. So what went wrong? Ignore the stupid haired buffoon you see in the top right corner there. Yes, it's me. This was me playing Rend in its alpha stage in 2017 before it hit early access in 2018. They insensitise massively getting people on board to be part of their program of content streamers and alpha testers. They really were trying to get this jumped up and pumped out there, giving people extra keys as well as making sure that content creators would maybe get mentions in discords and on some of their forum sites. But that still wasn't enough. Now I actually ended up turning down the sponsorship promotion with Rend because I really just didn't feel it fitted and I didn't enjoy the game that much. Mainly because it was just a bit too fussy. The simple premise was this, you take part as three factions and you're all fighting for the control of this magical tree. The idea being that you attack the other clans at certain times and then you can obviously wage war on them. In between that you're building yourself up, getting resources and you still can come in contact with other players in the open world, maybe trying to capture some new creatures and tame them. That sounds pretty good, but of course there are some real problems with it. Initially, I do believe they had strict set times for raiding, so this meant that if you weren't around on them days or that weekend, you would miss out on maybe two or three weeks of grinding and not see the actual battle. The conditions for raiding had to be met as well. You had little bars that signified exactly how well each faction was doing based on either experience or capturing certain resources. Basically a thermometer on showing who had maybe the most power. Not necessarily guaranteeing a win, but certainly giving an indication of how well that clan faction was going to maybe do. And that was one of the big problems. As soon as people started seeing one faction pull away from the others, they kind of maybe gave up a little bit or they just felt like they was going to lose. And lo and behold, more often than not, you would lose if you did actually start seeing the other clan pulling away. There was no way or real way to turn it around. This presented a huge problem and you should never really try to limit anyone's playability. It's why so many PvP focus games fail when they do raid windows etc. There's only been one game that's managed to maybe just about get it right and that doesn't have the best numbers. Conan Exiles has a PvP game mode where there are strict times dedicated to wherever your time zone is where you can actually have PvP. But to have for weeks on end no real chance to go and attack the other faction's base only to take them out in sort of singular combat in the world i think that was just way too limiting for this game and when you boil it down as well lots of the mechanics and lots of the simple features in it were pretty much rehashed from other survival games like ark like conan and it was maybe just a bit too much of the same sort of stuff people were grinding and grinding and grinding away and really feeling like they weren't getting anywhere becoming part of this huge faction seemed pretty good but it just meant that a lot of the time you've been told to do this or do that and with no real singular reward for playing the game you of course leveled up your own character and you had your own stats and you can choose different ways that you wanted to play the game but it still was a bit limiting because you had to contribute to the overall faction if you had any hope of winning. If you didn't win the chances are you could have your faction completely wiped from the server which means you'd have to restart all over again and I think this also put off a lot of people. Now I have to mention that the gameplay you are seeing is the pre-alpha, so it wasn't the actual full release when it went to early access last year. This was actually a pre-alpha gameplay that I managed to get part of. So I'm sure the game did improve in terms of looks, but as you can see it was a little bit clunky. Obviously going for this art style, this fantastical art style, was trying to be maybe a bit different from what was out there, but it just looked a little bit maybe unpolished. I'm sure it did improve and I've definitely seen some other tubers play it during the early access period as well and certainly things had gotten a lot better. People also spoke about the fact that the developers were just a little bit slow in getting content out there, taking forever to get around to doing the bug fixes and the pressing issues that affected the game and just the new features that were being added were kind of lackluster. They weren't really listening to what the community wanted. They were just going ahead and forging what they thought would be good and maybe not taking on point. It looks like developers really didn't listen enough to their community about doing the bug fixes and the issues. So many times now early access games aren't being treated as that. People expect the games to run or at least not crash every two seconds and that was one of the big criticisms of Rend. It was crashing a lot. 
Of the 18 reviews in the last month, 38% of them have been positive, meaning overwhelmingly this is a game you should be avoiding. And even the all-time score of a 1,000 reviews or so is only 60% positive. That really doesn't point to a game that has actually gone well through early access. It just means that this game really hasn't achieved what it's set out to. For context, there are games like Ark and Conan that don't necessarily have very good review scores on Steam either, but of course they have the players actually playing it on a daily basis to back it up, that even with their flaws, the game can still succeed. But it looks like in Ren's case, the flaws, the lack of tackling the issues most pressing meant the loyal fans that were playing and sticking with the game just couldn't take it anymore. It appears that once them streamers and YouTubers stopped playing Rend, so did everyone else, with the bulk of the people playing actually just only being there to be part of the streamers or the streamers' actual guilds or factions. And so when they left, it meant that the servers were dead. There was literally no one on to play the game, and it just really started to come apart. Going over the latest patch notes that have gone up for the game for launch, there seems to be some real progress made, lots of content, lots of features, and lots of bug fixing and so maybe it is a chance for people to come back and give the game a go and hopefully it'll generate some sort of hype around the launch but any game that dips below 100 players particularly a multiplayer survival game you can pretty much safely say that game is not going to recover so fair play to the developers they could have maybe strung along the community said they're going to be working on content for the future and just not bothered or moved on to things without being honest but they've been up front and outlined their plans too many times developers just go AWOL without addressing stuff the developers were doing all the right things they had a private test server basically to show what they're working on and get feedback based on the bug fixing they were doing but as you can see, between patch 9 and patch 8 was a period of nearly two and a half months. Maybe they needed more time to really get to work on some of the stuff rather than try and update the game on a monthly basis. But we've seen it time and time again from these early access games. If you're not constantly keeping your community updated, if it doesn't look like you're actually updating the game more regularly, people will lose heart and they will just go and play something else. It also looks like the bulk of the last update in January again was more bug fixing rather than new features. It's a topsy-turvy world, often I say that's the best thing to do, work on fixing the bugs and issues and then add the content towards the end of the game. When it's about to launch, if you've got a whole host of new features, new creatures, new ways to play it, that is surely going to draw some new eyes on it. But clearly the work they were doing just wasn't significant enough. And it must be really hard to be working so hard on a game when there's so little people actually playing it. Trawling through the forums, I found plenty of evidence from lots of posts saying that the balance of the game just wasn't ever there. It became a point where you could see the progress of the other faction and see them pulling away, which meant they would have a significant advantage when it came to War Day. I think if they hadn't focused so much on this big War Day events, Rend maybe would have had a chance to get up there alongside some of the other games like Rust. People love to build and make their own little slice of the map theirs, and I think having these only control points where certain areas you could build limited the game's potential. It does have a great mix of combat in terms of weapons, as well as magical and melee stuff, but clearly the game's buggy nature and just the issues that affected it at its launch left such a sour note in its mouth that people just didn't want to come back to it. With my No One Is Playing series, I really do try and give you some positives or talk about what the game could do to improve things and maybe make a comeback. We've spoken already about Scum, I've spoken about Fallout, and I've spoken about Atlas, each time trying to give what I, in my opinion the game needs, ways that it can get some of its players back. But in this instance, it really does look like the devs have thrown in the towel. And I don't blame them, not every game can work out and as long as it can maybe recover their costs I think it's a lesson learned for them to maybe think about what they really want to produce and make sure they've got it balanced in tune with what the community wants. It had some really cool ideas, I love the idea of the Shadow Realm diving into a similar realm where you could get certain high level creatures and certain high level resources and the way that you could wage war with siege engines and all sorts of different ways it seemed pretty cool but there are only so many survival games you can sink your teeth into and if no one else is on the servers with you it really does make you think it's not worth playing if you've got no one to go and raid or take your battle alongside to. 
The game is currently 67% off, nearly £8, so about $10. I don't think I can say give it a go even at that price, but certainly if you've always wondered about Rend, it may be worth diving into some of the reviews before you do so. And just note that the chances of you coming across full servers are going to be very slim. Even with the promo and maybe some people tweeting and streaming it showing that the game isn't completely dead, I really don't think this one's going to recover. They have added single player mode where you have hordes of the enemy creatures come and attack you, which I think is a really good addition. But obviously it might be a limited time where they actually have the online servers and so it looks like they'll probably end up shutting them down in a few months if there really is just no one actually playing this game. Rend, it looks like you just bit off a little bit more than you could chew. Some great ideas but really weren't gauging what the market was looking for at the time. You tried your best, you had alphas, you had lots of periods of time for people to get into this game, help you test it and balance stuff, but it just appears your team was just a bit too small to keep up with the demand of players nowadays. Over-reliance on YouTubers and streamers promoting your game as well really maybe didn't go down that great, and I think next time don't limit it to any sort of partnership program, just simply go out there, get your game out there, the trailers out there, and maybe just go by word of mouth. YouTubers and streamers don't make a game, but they can do the right promo for you as long as the game there is actually good. And just simply put, the gameplay, the bugs, the problems and issues not being sorted quick enough meant Rend died a quick death. I am Jade PG. This has been another No One Is Playing. Let me know what you think about Rend. Agree, disagree, pop it in the comment section down below and I'll be back for another one very soon.